Her hoof came down and slammed into my jaw, knocking a tooth free. She lifted misery again and brought it down in an arc, slicing off my left ear. I whimpered in pain as she said, I'm going to cut you into tiny little pieces. I'm going to make sure you suffer for as long as your mind can take it. Then I'm going to break your mind right before I cut your head off. Then I'm going to do the same to your mother and your lover, and then your friends. I could just make out a bright light from behind me, but I couldn't see what was going on between the pain and the tears. Misery came down again and sliced a bit of my flesh off my back, then again to stab me in the flank, followed by Aquila turning me onto my back again. She then brought down Misery, had a slow line down the scar left over from the surgery I had when I was with the Steel Rangers, Bunker. After the first fight, where I'd let Aquila control me, the pain was almost too much for me to take. Black was already starting to work its way into my vision as the sounds of Aquila's screaming cries uh, echoed in the distance. Again, I heard Aquila's voice, this time close to my good ear. Oh, don't worry. I'm not going to let you die here. Here, let me heal you just enough to keep you alive and awake. Then I felt the flesh knit together slowly, not fully healing me of my wounds, but just enough to keep me from bleeding out. With a weak moan of pain, I said, Just end it. You want me to this to be over? She asked. Asked nicely. And I might just put you out of your misery. <laughs> misery. Isn't that the name of this wonderful sword you found? Please. I'm begging you, Aquila. Just get it over with. Let this be over between us. You win, okay? Just fucking end it. I begged, hating myself for every word. But I was finished and I knew it. Game over. Time to finish playing. Well, since you asked so nicely, fine with me, I guess. Goodbye, she said. Her body weight went rigid as a magical circle appeared on her chest. She was forced off me slightly, and the glow of the circle grew. Looking down, I saw there was another one on my chest, one that matched the one on Aquila's. It was then that I heard Mom's voice chanting. With a slight bit of strength I had left, I managed to turn my head to see her. She was standing a few meters back from Aura, who looked scared at the sight of my mangled body. Mom's body was glowing with a brilliant blue light as her chanting grew deeper, and a wind started to pick up around us. White Oak moved further away from Mom at the same time as Aura. Another magic circle with more detail than any I'd seen before on my mother appeared under her, followed by six more around her body. They all pulsed once, and more magic circles started to appear around myself and Aquila. What are you doing, Grim? You can't kill me, even with your vast power, Aquila yelled. And why can't I move? I felt something deep inside of me pulse, and a speck of light shot out of my muzzle and into Aquila's. At the same time, that happened to her with me. As the light entered me, I could feel as though I could just make out the slightest bit of Aquila's own pain. It was like her body was struggling to handle the amount of energy it was being forced to contain. I couldn't think on it too much because, right then, Mom's chanting grew louder. The clouds above started to flash with lightning. The rocks around us started to float into the air, and the sound of electricity uh, flowing seemed to fill the air around us with the smell of ozone. The wind picked up dust on the ground, and it started to turn into a small tornado around the three of us. Mom, Aquila, and me. I couldn't see Aura or White Oak anymore, only the power coming from my mother. A purple energy seemed to come from the ground itself, and a spark and crackle around us. Mom's eyes were glowing with purple and blue light as she continued to cast whatever spell she was working on. As the spell hit its peak, Mom stood tall and proud, her gaze falling on mine. In that moment, I saw her for the pony she's always been and always would be pony who wouldn't let any pony tell her she couldn't do something. She'd prove them wrong every time. 
Then she stopped her chanting, and everything exploded into purple, blue, and white light. When it passed, Mom gave me a soft smile, then fell to the ground with a loud thump, her eyes half open as she struggled to breathe. Whatever she tried to do, it looked like it almost killed her. Ignoring every pain in my body, I started to drag myself closer to her with my remaining foreleg. I only got a meter when Aquila struck. She flipped me over again and started to squeeze her magic around my throat once more. This time I couldn't breathe at all and my eyes bulged as I tried to gasp for air. She looked like hell. Her mane was messed up, she had more cuts along her body, pure madness gleaming in her red eyes. I don't care about hurting you anymore. I'm just going to kill you here and now. She looked over at Mom. Your pathetic spell didn't work, Grim. G I was confused for a moment of what had happened, until I saw Aquila gasping for air. She let her hold on my throat go as she took a step back. As soon as the spell was stopped, I gasped for air, and so did she. She looked confused. Then she hit me as hard as she could with a hoof. I let out a weak scream, but nothing like Aquila, who threw back with a bruise on her white face. She looked around even more confused. And that only grew when Mom's laugh came from a few feet away. What, Aquila? Don't like the pain you dish out? Mom said weakly. What did you do? She yelled, looking at Mom. I bonded your life to shadows. Mom said with a cough. If you kill Shadow, and only you, then you die along with her. Even if you send some pony after her, you'll still die as well. Because this spell will know that you were the one to try and end her life. I've made it impossible for you to kill my daughter. So, do what you want to me. But you'll never be able to be the one thing you want to do for years. Kill your host. You bitch! Aquila yelled, lifting up misery. I'll make you pay for this. You might think you've stopped me from killing Shadow, but every spell can be broken. True, it can be broken, but it'll take you years to figure it out. And in that time, Shadow will be able to grow and find her own way to destroy you for good. He said, her voice sounding even weaker. If I can't kill Shadow, then I'll kill you, she yelled. Aura flew over and yelled, You won't kill any pony with the sword of my ancestors. I'm Aura Blood Talon, and Misery belongs to me. With those words, Misery flashed and shot out of Aquila's magic, and flew to land hard against the ground right in front of Aura. All of us were shocked at that, but Mom seemed to understand. She laughed again. Misery was bonded to Aura's family a long time ago, you can't use it to hurt her or anyone she doesn't want you to hurt. That sword is alive in its own way, and it will always do as its true master wants. Now, if I were you, Aquila, I'd get out of here before something happens to Shadow, and she dies from the injuries you caused her. Aquila glared at all of us, her horn glowing as she thought about what she'd do to us if she only could. Then she cursed and said, I have other plans that I need to take care of anyway. But don't worry, Grim. I'll find you again, and the rest of them, and I'll kill you all. Even if it takes me years. Mark my words. This isn't the last you've heard of me. I look forward to it, Aquila. Mom said, and with that, Aquila took one more look at me and growled. I'll see you sooner than you think, Shadow. This isn't over yet, she said. Then, in a flash of pink light, she was gone. As soon as she was gone, I let my head fall to the ground, breathing in heavily as the pain of everything Aquila did to me hit all at once. Aura was there a second later. Shadow, just hold on. I think you're gonna go into shock. I felt her lift my stump of a leg, sending more pain flowing into my body. She reached for something in her satchel she always carried and pulled out a strip of leather. A moment later, she started wrapping the strips of leather around my stump, pulling it as tight as she could with her teeth and hooves. Damn it! If only I had my talons, it'd be much easier. The pain grew, and I almost passed out again. But I held on. 
Nora, <clears throat> I <laughs> don't feel so good. Nora looked over at White Oak and Mom, yelling, We need help! Where's your backup, White Oak? I'll be here in a few minutes, White Oak said. Grim, you have to do something to heal her as best you can. Her wounds are worse than they look. She's bleeding internally, and her stump is leaking again. Aura yelled towards them as tears flowed down her face. I needed to calm her down, but did my best to dig through the pain. Hey, Aura, I said, doing my best to smile. Shadow, don't talk, you need to save your strength, she said, running a hoof down my face slowly. You hear me? Don't go making things worse than they already are. Nora, it's okay. I'm sure I'll be okay. I'm lucky like that. Right? I said, doing my best to make a joke out of it. Did you see me, Aura? I did it. I cast my expulsion spell, and no rainbows. The killing joke stopped working. Isn't that great? I'm not a cliche anymore. Wonderful. And please stop talking. Help will be here soon, she said, the worry on her face, plain as day. It's already here, Mom said, slumping down next to me. She reached into the small bag she had around her neck, something I hadn't noticed before. Pulled out a small bottle of bright purplish-pink liquid. This is a healing potion I made myself. It'll help keep her stable for a while, long enough for the surgeons and the ministry to help her. Looking up at Mom... All my worries about what was wrong with my body faded away. Just a moment ago, she'd looked as she did before the, she cast the last spell. Older, but not that old. More wrinkles and gray in her mane, but now she looked like a grandmother. As I watched, I saw that more lines were showing up on her face, and her mane was starting to thin. Almost like she was aging rapidly in front of my very eyes. Mom, what's happening to you? I asked. But she just pushed the bottle in my muzzle and forced me to drink down the potion. I gagged and swallowed the liquid. Moments later, I felt as if most of the pain was gone and my body felt a little stronger. The part where my leg had been cut off and my missing ear still hurt like hell, but I could tell that the blood was slowing down. There you go. And don't worry about me, Shadow. I knew what I was doing when I cast that spell. Don't worry about me, she said. Then she fell back with a nasty cough. White Oak ran over and helped my mom to sit up as I tried to drag myself to her. Dora was holding me too tight, and I was too weak to do much more than move my left foreleg around. Weakly, I said, Mom, what's happening? Tell me, please. Shadow, it's okay, she said, smiling up at me weakly. Then she turned to White Oak. Help me get closer to my daughter, please, old friend. I saw tears in White Oak's eyes doing what she was asked and dragged my mom close to me so that she was lying next to me. Laura set me down so my head was right next to mom's. They both took a step back, letting us have a moment. Mom smiled even with her face aging in front of me. I reached my remaining forehoof closer and set it on her face. Mom, what did you do? She smiled wider and slowly put her hoof on my own. She took a deep breath and said, I'm making up for my past mistake, Shadow. Then she looked up towards the sky and I saw tears flow as she continued. I thought I'd never see the stars again. Confused, I slowly turned my head up and saw something beautiful. I don't know how. Even to this day, which of our spells did it? But somehow, the cloud cover that blocked the sky from the ponies in the wasteland had been pushed back. Now I could see the night sky and one of the most beautiful things I'd ever witnessed in my short life. I saw the moon. It was full and shining its pale light down on both of us. Around it, millions of stars twinkled in the distance. It wasn't the first time I'd busted a hole in the clouds. It was the first time I'd had a moment to see what beauty the night held. Mom spoke again, her voice weaker. She did her best to keep her words easy to understand. When you were born, I named you after these beautiful dots in the sky. Every pony thought it was because the 
family name. My brother was called Star before he was Zorikalus. My mother held the name and her father before her, and his father, then his mother, and so on. To me, I didn't care about all my family or their traditions. No. I named you Star because I've always been fascinated by them. I always wanted to know more about them and what made them so mesmerizing. So you carry the same name as our family. Not because you are like them, but because I knew that one day you'd shine as bright as the heavens themselves. Tears were flowing faster now as I pulled Mom's head closer to mine, hugging her to me as I said, There has to be a way I can help you. She cut me off. Sweetheart, that's enough. Now listen to me because I don't have long. I can tell. I won't spend my last moments in life arguing with you. We did enough of that, and more, while I still didn't know you were my star. I nodded. All right, Mom. Good girl? She said as she reached her head up and kissed my horn like she used to when I was still young. You're more than just my daughter. You're more than just a random mare who was unlucky as a foal. But a pony who was meant to go through all this pain and loss so you could change the world and make it better. I have faith in you, my... Sweet, brave filly. I know who you are meant to become. I know you'll fix everything. And my own mistakes. I don't think I can do that, Mom. I'm not strong enough, I said. In response, she slowly lifted her pit buck and connected it to mine, sending me files as she said, You're stronger than you know, sweetie. So stop telling yourself otherwise. I need you to learn to control that power inside of you, you're going to need it soon. I want to make sure that you have a head start, so listen close. She took a deep breath, her face looking like she was in a great deal of pain before she continued. Aquila isn't as powerful as you think. When Stargazer was used, it also stopped before all of Aquila's power could be pulled down from wherever she came from. She'll need to first unlock the project, and do do that, she'll need all three Mach 2s. They were once used on three or four points of Equestria where the project was located. I just give you a map and information on how to get these locations. One's in Baltimore, the next is in the Badlands, the third's in the Crystal Empire, and the last is in New Pegasus. Wait, you knew all this time where to find the project? I asked. She shrugged the best she could. I've known for many years now. I forgot some of it due to my own stupidity with my magic, but yes, I knew. I knew the Bach twos, though, she said, chuckling. I'll tell you a secret. I never really wanted to turn on Falling Shadows. I wanted to destroy it. You did? What about all that bluster when you were still nuts about becoming all-powerful and shit? I asked. It was a lie. I was in pain and still upset that I lost you. I was always a good liar. It comes from growing up in the kind of home I did. Anyway, I have everything you need on the files I sent you. The rest of the things I'm missing are already on your mark, too. I remember putting them there before you... Well, before I thought you died. Both the files together, you'll be able to put the puzzle together. Remember this. Before you can do anything, you first need to find out what Night Stalker did to the tower in the Crystal Empire and fix it, she said. Wait, you want me to go home and do what? Find the entrance to the project and fix the project? Wouldn't that mean that Aquila would be one step closer to getting what she wanted? It does, but at the same time, you can't do what you need to until you fix that tower. They all work as one, and none of them can be taken down unless they're all working. Only then can the project either be activated or destroyed. A little trick that our grandmother Manette put on a program. Her insurance policy of sorts. Trust me, if you work fast to keep Aquila from figuring out what you're doing, you can do it. She said. What about the promise I made to White Oak? I asked, looking over towards the director who was a good distance away, still letting us have our moment. Mom smiled. As she said quietly, 
White Oak and Stormy are my friends, yes. But... Fuck em. I know that project can do and the danger it might bring. If your uncle lives, he can tell you more. Trust me, it has to be destroyed. But how will I even find the location in the Crystal Empire? It's not a small place, I said. Go to the Forgotten Library. I'm sure you know where it's at if you saw my memories. Once you're there, find the section in the library that you know Minette wouldn't have ever had in her collection. Behind that bookcase, you'll find the door of the project, he said, followed by a cough. I waited for her to start breathing again before I asked. If you know where it's located, then why haven't you fixed it yourself? I can't get in. Only three ponies and a few griffins who get into that room, she said with a twinkle in her eye. Night Stalker's descendants and Greta's. I could have had your father or your uncle Stryker get into the room, but I never trusted them enough to show them the location. So now I leave it up to you. You, my last chance to fix what wrongs our families have brought over the centuries. Her pip up beeped and she disconnected it. As she did, I asked, I don't know if I can do this without you. You can. Just... Have faith. You've done so much without me for so long. Now, enough of all this crap, she said before looking up at Aura, saying, Aura, please come here. She came and sat next to me, looking down at my mother. What can I do to help? In response, Mom reached up and took Aura's hoof, moving it to rest on mine. I know how much you care about my daughter. So, before I go, I want to ask you one simple thing. Can you make sure you watch over her, keep her safe, and be there for her when I no longer can? Make sure that her life is long and full of happiness. Make sure you love her and care for her until your last day in this life. Be her rock, her companion, be her one and only love. Can you do that for me? Aura was crying as she nodded. I can, and I will. You have my word. Good, Mom said, lying on her back and looking up at the stars. I'm glad you two have each other. I just wish Nightshade were here so I could tell him how sorry I am. Tell him how much I miss and love him. Aura, turn on the record on my pit buck, please, I said, stiffing slowly. She did, and then when Mom saw what we were doing, she asked, What are you doing? Tell him, I said, holding back more tears. Tell him how much you love him. He needs to hear it from you. I'll make sure he gets the message. Grim, there has to be some way we can help you. Aura said before turning on the recording. I wish you could too, but you can't. Said slowly. Now, let me leave my message to my husband. Please. They both nodded, then Aura clicked it on instead. Okay, it's ready. More tears started to flow from Mom's eyes as she said. Nightshade? It's me. I know the past few years have been hard on you. I know I've been anything but a good wife or a good friend. I just want you to know that even with my lost memory or the pain I put you in and our daughter through, that I never stopped loving you, even when I tried to tell myself I didn't. When I came back to the Enclave, I had to harden my heart so you wouldn't see how much it hurt me to treat you the way that I did. But now, I'm dying, and I can't do anything to stop it. I want you to do me one last favor. Even though I know I don't deserve to ask anything of you, please, don't dwell on the past. Move on once I'm gone, and be happy. You've done so much to try and help the Enclave, to help your family, to help others you didn't even know. 
You're a wonderful and brave stallion. A stallion that I'm proud of. And you need to start seeing that. It's time for us to move on and let the next generation finish what we started nearly 18 years ago. I love you, Nightshade. And I'll wait for you on the other side. Laura stopped the recording, and I couldn't hold back my tears as I saw the light in my mom's eyes starting to go dim. I reached over to her again and rested my head on her chest, unable to hold back the sobs anymore. Her breaths were coming in slowly now. I could hear her harp slow as the toll of that spell she cast finally started to finish its devilish work. I sobbed harder, saying, Mom, please don't go. Please? I still need you here. I spent most of my life wanting to find you again. She didn't argue with me or try to make me quiet. She just rested a hoof on my head and kept looking up at the stars as she slowly ran her hoof through my filthy mane. For a long moment, I just let my pain and sorrow out until I couldn't get another tear out. Finally, I looked away from Mom's chest and up at the stars with her. My breathing was still heavy, but I just took this last moment I knew I had with her and watched the night sky. In the distance, I heard ponies coming, but White Oak held them back. She knew as well as the rest of us that we couldn't save my mom. She made her choice and cast the spell that would end her life. She was going to die as she lived. On her own terms. No pony could change who she was or make her do anything because my mother, Grimoire Spell, was a strong and powerful pony. Finally, Mom spoke up, and I knew deep down that this would be her final words, her own eulogy. I was listening closely as she said something I would never forget. As we come to the end of this stage in our life, we find ourselves trying to remember the good times, trying to forget the bad times. We find ourselves thinking about the future, starting to Worry, thinking, what am I going to do? Where am I going to be in ten years? But I say to you, my little star, Hey, look at me. Please, don't worry so much. Because in the end, none of us have very much time on Equus. Life is fleeting. And if you're ever distressed, cast your eyes to the summer sky. And the stars that are strung across the velvety night. And then, when a shooting star streaks across the blackness, turning night, that day, make a wish. Think of me. Make your life spectacular. I know that I did. After that last word, Mom's who fell from my hand and landed in the dirt with a soft thump. I looked up at her, saw her eyes looking slightly up at the stars. Her face was so wrinkled and her mane was nearly gone. She looked like a mare who reached the age of 150. It wasn't the face of my mother anymore, but that of a long-dead pony. Aura reached out and pulled me to her as I started to sob harder again. I held onto her tight and... My eyes stuck on my mother's dead body. So ends the story of Grimoire Spell. A mare who risked everything to do one simple thing. Save her daughter and the wasteland. A mare who gave up her memory, her life, her husband, and her happiness to try and reach that goal. Her last act? She managed to do at least one of them. She left the rest up to my friends and I.